Decline and Fall is a 1928 novel penned by the English author Evelyn Waugh. Serving as his debut published work, it stands as a compelling piece of social satire, drawing inspiration from Waugh's experiences at Lansing College, his time as an undergraduate at Hereford College in Oxford, and his stint as an instructor at Arnold House in Wales. The book employs sharp black humor, a hallmark of the author's style, to satirize various aspects and conventions prevalent in 1920s British society. The title, a sly nod to the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, cleverly mocks the seriousness and inflated self-consciousness of British culture. Moreover, it serves as a broader commentary on human helplessness in the face of the circumstances they find themselves living in. The narrative commences amidst the university life of an ill-fated student named Paul Pennyfeather. He finds himself entangled in the misadventures of the Bollinger Club and is unable to evade the consequences of his clumsy mistakes. After accumulating a series of disciplinary violations, he is expelled from the university, putting an abrupt end to his academic career. Stripped of his allowance and lodging, he is compelled to take up employment as an instructor at the Lanaba Castle School in North Wales. Adaptation comes swiftly as he settles into his new environment, forming bonds with his colleagues and students. Pennyfeather's first challenge arises when he is appointed as the leader of a school sporting event by the headmaster, Dr. Fagan, a responsibility he manages with success. During this time, he encounters the alluring Honorable Mrs. Margot Best Chetwind and finds himself captivated by her. Agreeing to tutor her son, Peter Best Chetwind, during the holiday break, Pennyfeather's infatuation with Margot grows, leading him to decline Dr. Fagan's proposal of marriage to his eldest daughter due to his feelings for Margot. After the unexpected disappearance and presumed death of his colleague, Captain Grimes, Paul Pennyfeather leaves Lanaba Castle and relocates to King's Thursday, the estate of Mrs. Best Chetwind. In this absurd setting, he and Mrs. Best Chetwind fall deeply in love. She tries to persuade him to stay indefinitely and offers him a significant role in managing her South American businesses. As their affection grows, Pennyfeather proposes marriage, gaining the blessing of her son, Peter, to proceed with the wedding. Amid wedding preparations, Captain Grimes unexpectedly reappears at King's Thursday, seeking employment. As Pennyfeather witnesses Margot's impressive business acumen, his admiration for her deepens. Three days before the wedding, Mrs. Best Chetwind asks him to travel to Marseilles for urgent business matters. He successfully negotiates bureaucratic complexities to facilitate a money exchange and returns to London on the morning of the wedding. Raising a toast to fortune, he is suddenly arrested by Scotland Yard police. The latter part of the novel chronicles Pennyfeather's arrest, trial, conviction, and imprisonment in Blackstone Jail. During his incarceration, he is visited by Peter, who conveys Margot's distress at his situation. Margot vows to do everything possible to rescue him, excluding going to prison herself. In an attempt to secure Pennyfeather's release, she even considers marrying the bureaucrat Maltravers. However, Pennyfeather suggests she wait for his normal release. In prison, Pennyfeather surprisingly thrives in solitary confinement finding peace in routines and isolation from daily chaos. To his request, the prison governor subjects him to a makeshift rehabilitation program. Unfortunately, this plan backfires, leading to the murder of Mr. Prendergast by another inmate. Pennyfeather finds himself transferred to Egdon Heath, a long-term prison where he unexpectedly reunites with Grimes. Inside the prison, he starts receiving peculiar and luxurious gifts adding to the intrigue surrounding his circumstances. After Margot's visit, he receives a letter indicating her waning confidence in his release and her growing alienation from society as she strives to free her lover. Margot reveals her decision to end her business and marry Maltravers. Grimes, just as enigmatic as before, escapes from the prison, riding the warden's horse, leaving his fate uncertain, much like in the early part of the novel. Inmates assume he may have perished in the surrounding bog. Pennyfeather's release from Egdon Heath is clandestinely facilitated through a fake doctor's note, indicating an appendectomy, and a meeting with Dr. Fagan, Alastair Trumpington, and an intoxicated surgeon. In this gathering, he is forced to sign a will, and a fake death certificate is written up. Setting sail on Margot's yacht bound for Corfu, Pennyfeather meets a man named Otto Silenus during his journey. They engage in an abstract conversation about human nature. 
Inspired by his experiences, Pennyfeather decides to return to Oxford in disguise and pursue studies in theology. Remarkably, he manages to resume his life at college without detection, adopting the same routine as before. On the novel's final night, Pennyfeather revisits the Bollinger Club where the story began. There, he encounters Peter Best Chetwind, now a student, who tragically succumbs to an alcohol overdose after expressing regret about their meeting. Decline and Fall masterfully employs dark satire to scrutinize modern society, shedding light on the absurdity of social life during a specific period in British history. The circular plot and recurring themes of death and moral failure emphasize the futility of free will in an extremely chaotic world. The conclusion intriguingly suggests that the solution to the modern world's ills lies in embracing the inherent comedy of life rather than striving to understand and control one's environment. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.